Hey guys, welcome back. So today is a little bit of a different video as you can tell from the title. Um, I recently, about a month ago, found out I have a brain tumor um, and it's really been hard to deal with for me and my family. Um, and I wanted to come on here and tell you guys because I'm obviously going to be away for quite some time because I am getting surgery done on my tumor to get it removed. Um, so I just kind of wanted to go through the story of how I found out I had one and kind of all the steps that I'm taking to get it removed. So if you would like to find out about it, then just keep on watching. All right, so about a month ago, I wasn't feeling well. I had visited my sister in Chicago and I came back from being in Chicago on Sunday. And that Sunday night, um, I heard this really, really weird sound in my ear and then and all of a sudden I couldn't form words. I couldn't type anything. I couldn't form words. I couldn't form sentences. Um, and I was like freaking out. I was by myself in my room. So after I heard this like really weird sound in my ear, I tried to Google um, like weird sounds in ear and I couldn't type. I couldn't form a word. I didn't know how to spell. I couldn't figure out how to spell. Um, and that's when I realized that something was wrong. Um, so I decided just to go to bed and I woke up feeling fine. I could talk, I could form words again, um, but something felt wrong. My body just felt really wrong. It didn't feel normal, um, but I got up Monday and went to school. Um, at school, I was absolutely miserable. Um, we had thought I was dehydrated, so I brought a bunch of water to school and I had been like chugging water all day, um, but it wasn't really helping. Um, so I was literally miserable at, miserable at school. I was like sitting at my desk like this and I was just like, I, something's wrong, like I don't know what's wrong. Um, and I haven't taken a day off of work in four years, so my school knows that like I don't take days off. And so on Tuesday I woke up and I was getting ready for work and I was just like, about ready to cry I just some because I knew something was wrong with my body I didn't know what it was um, so I ended up taking a day off of school so you know if I take a day off of school and you know like something is truly wrong um, so I took a day off of school I stayed home and my mom got me like a bunch of Gatorade and like Powerade and stuff because um, we were like I think I'm dehydrated I like googled all the signs that of like what's going on with me and it all led to I was really dehydrated so I got a bunch of Gatorade and I was like chugging it and a bunch of water and I stayed home um, and with the Gatorade I did feel better um, but something was wrong. I still felt like something was wrong. Um, so I went to school on Wednesday. I still wasn't feeling myself. Um, and I was still kind of fumbling around with my words. So I'd be talking, but I couldn't think of like specific words. Like if my mom had her glasses on, I'd be like, did you get new... Did, uh, I'm like, what are those called? And she'd be like, my glasses? And I'd be like, why couldn't I think of what that word was? Like why didn't I know how to say what that word was and that was happening f since Monday and there it wasn't just glasses it was like random things like especially Monday when I was at school when I was trying to teach I like couldn't read um I mean I could read but like I would try to read and it would be all messed up and it'd be like really really choppy um and I just I knew something was wrong and then Wednesday when I went to school the same thing was still happening and I knew something was off something was wrong with my speech and I couldn't like talk normally and couldn't form sentences normally um so I ended up leaving at noon and my mom left her work at noon and she took me to the ER um because we knew something was wrong so we get there and my blood pressure was like 156 over something and it was so if you don't know what blood pressure is that's like extremely high um and I went into a room um, so they put me on a drip like an IV drip I think is what it is and like you know put the IV in your arm and like it's a drip and they put it through me in like 15 minutes and I was feeling so much better so I was obviously very dehydrated and they had said I was like severely dehydrated so um, because I was so dehydrated they said um, they wanted to do an MRA of my head to make sure I didn't have any blood clots in my brain because I was so dehydrated so 
I went to the MRA. I got the MRA and then I went back to my room. I didn't get the MRA done until I think 11 p.m. So I was in the emergency room from um, I got there around like 1230 and then I got my MRA still in the emergency room at like 11 p.m. Um, and then the MRA took about an hour and they finished at about midnight and then they came in a couple of hours later and they said I did not have any blood clots in my brain but I did have a shadow on my brain. Um, and they were pretty positive it was nothing, but they wanted to do an MRI just to make sure it's nothing. But they were like, but we're almost positive it's nothing, so don't worry about it, but we're going to do an MRI. So you can't do another MRI for another 24 hours, so the next day I had to wait all day, and then I did my MRI um, midnight the next day. So I did my MRI and the doctor or the yeah the doctor said that he would come in early in the morning to let me know the results even though he was pretty sure it was nothing. Um so I woke up around 9ish and he came in and he came in and sat on my bed and I was like shit. Sorry for the lack of words, but I was like shit. Um and he was like there actually is something on your brain. It is a tumor and I just about lost it. Like I started crying. It was horrible. My mom was in there and she was basically crying. I was crying. Um, and it was horrible. And I was like, I don't even know. I was like, what am I supposed to do now? And he was like, we don't think it's cancerous. So I was like, thank freaking God. Um, but um, it is a tumor and we're, I think we're just going to watch it. And we were like, okay, like I can watch it. Like, that's fine. Um, he said it was a grade or he said, he said he thought it was a glioma, um, a glioma tumor. And so I was freaking out and I was just freaking out. And he was like, we're just going to watch it and monitor it. Um, because the type of tumor that it is, is very slow growing. If it even would grow, it might not even grow. And he thinks that I had it for about five to 10 years. So knowing that I would like look back at pictures on like my Instagram and Facebook and be like, I had a tumor at this point and like I didn't know and like it's I don't know then he says that he wants to get a collaborative opinion so he sends me to um, a different hospital at Henry Ford um, and he said I just want you to talk to him and see what his opinion is on your tumor and so on and so forth so about a week goes by and I go and see the doctor at or the, so I go and see the neurosurgeon at Henry Ford and he came in and I was you know ready I like heard all the information already I know I have a tumor it was all fine um, he came in and he said it needs to get taken out and so of course once again I start crying because I'm not it now went from me knowing I have a brain tumor and I'm just gonna be watching it to me having to get brain surgery so obviously that was pretty hard so so he said that he agrees with the first doctor, I'm not going to mention any names, but he agrees with the first doctor that it might not ever grow, but the, there is a possibility that it could grow and it could become cancerous later on in life. So he said that he thinks it should get taken out. Um, he said it doesn't need to get taken out now, but it needs to be taken out sometime soon. Um, and he wants to send me to another neurosurgeon who would be doing my surgery. Um, so. I'm a mess at this point. I'm crying in the office and I like don't know what to do. Like I don't understand how this like all of a sudden happened. I was so confused. I went into the hospital um, thinking I was just dehydrated and I'm coming out of the hospital with a brain tumor. Um, so he wants to send me to another doctor, um, another neurosurgeon who would be doing my surgery. Um, but before they send me there, they wanted me to do a functional MRI. Now functional MRI is while they're doing the MRI, they have me looking at pictures and looking at specific things and I need to think about all of them so they can do mapping of where things are located on my brain. So they send me to the functional MRI. I'm extremely nervous because they said I'm going to have to be like thinking and answering questions um, and I don't know why I was so nervous. So I get there and he said that I'm not going to be saying my answers out loud. All I need to do is think about my answers. and. So one of the things that I had to do during the functional MRI, they would put a picture on the screen and I had to think of an action verb. Um, or I had to think of an action 
and I had to think of an action for that word. So they'd show like a picture of a book and you'd have to think of something about a book. So like opening the book, turning the page of a book. And for some reason with everything that showed up on the screen, it always ended up after like two of them, I couldn't think of any more and I'd think of throw the book. Or like there was a grasshopper and I was like, what's like, hop like a grasshopper, throw the grasshopper. And then there was a fork and they were like, eat the fork. And I was like, wait a second, you don't eat the fork, you eat with the fork. And it was actually kind of fun, I'm not gonna lie. Um, and then there was memory one. So there was um, specific words that had, there were specific pictures that had words over the top. So like a cookie and on the top of it, it said the cookie was sweet. And there was a picture of a clown. It said the clown was scary. Um, there's a picture of a snail and it said the snail crept slowly. Um, so I had to study all of that for like couple minutes and then they would get rid of the words and they would just show the picture and I had to think about what the word was that was associated with that picture and that would show the parts of the brain of my memory and my thoughts and I don't know something like that. So I'm leaving the MRI, functional MRI, and he said we got some really good images of your brain and I was like okay well something positive like thank god there was something positive happening um, from some doctor's appointment because it seemed like everything that happened in every doctor's appointment came out to be something negative. Um, so I went to, on Wednesday of the next week, I went to the third neurosurgeon and he came in and I was obviously nervous but I wasn't as nervous. He came in and he just had like a great presence of himself and just like very like calming um, which was obviously good because he's gonna be my neurosurgeon and he I told he like started to turn his computer screen towards me and I was like I don't want to see it. I don't want to see how big it is. I don't want to freak myself out. I don't want to look at it like at all and he and he um said actually the it's and he said actually it's like really really cool and I'd really like to show you um so my mom and dad were there as well so he turned the screen and he was showing me um the functional MRI so he was saying that in the specific part of your brain so let me see all right so here is let's say a picture of your brain it's not really true to size but obviously so like here's your brain I don't know if you can fully see it the speech part of your brain is normally right here um, right here this is normally where your speech part of your brain is and unfortunately that is where my tumor is which is in the same spot um, so in the functional MRI he was showing me that um, your speech is normally here um, but it looks like when my tumor started growing, instead of growing into my speech, my speech got pushed up, and now my speech is up here, and some of it is over here. So, from what it looks like they said, is that it's there's not speech where the tumor is, so it should be, like, I guess, easier to take out. Um, but they're not, I guess, 100% sure, but according to the functional MRI, my speech has moved up and it's no longer in the spot that it normally would be in a normal brain. So it is up here and then my tumor is right here. So when I was talking to the neurosurgeon, obviously he had to say all of the negative things that could happen with surgery. So I asked a lot of questions about the surgery and everything that it entailed. Um, and one thing that he had told me that there was a less than 1% chance, so obviously it's not very big, but there is less than a 1% chance that I will lose my speech and I will never be able to understand language or talk again um, so that is like what is freaking me out the most I mean I know it's like a less than 1% chance but I mean you can't think of like what never being able to talk or like understand anything again that's like really scary when you like go in because you're dehydrated and you come out and like that could happen um, but I mean I know less than 1% chance is very small he also said that 20% chance that my speech is going to be messed up it's not going to be 100% um, perfect but he said it can get fixed with speech therapy um, so that means if you do the math correctly there is an 80% chance that I will come out totally fine um, so obviously we are all praying for that so my surgery is May 8th um, I'm not sure when this video is going up if it is past May 8th I, that means I have already had my surgery so that means that I'm probably not going to be filming for a while just because there is a six-week recovery um, but I'm hoping to be able to be 
maybe doing some videos if I can. Um, also, they have to shave part of my head right here to make the incision on cutting, so I am going to have some hair missing right here, so you guys are just going to have to bear it with me for that. So I'm obviously not going to be in school for the last part of the year. Um, my last day was May 4th, and just even before that day, so today is April 22nd, so I'm filming this quite a bit in advance. Um, just thinking about me having to tell my kids that I'm not going to be their teacher anymore because I have to get brain surgery is just like makes me want to cry because um, I know there's some specific kids that are going to have a really hard time with me leaving um, but hopefully I'll be able to visit them while I'm in recovery um, but can you imagine trying to tell 140 10 year olds that you're going to be leaving as their teacher because they have to have brain surgery like it's nuts um, and it's like really upsetting, but but I know I'll be fine and I will be back. Um, so yeah, so I just wanted you guys to know because I am going to be out for quite some time. Um, I'm gonna try to pre-film some videos, um, but I can't guarantee. I do have a lot going on right now, obviously. So I will talk to you guys later. I love you guys so, so much and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.